This video is sponsored by Wondrium. More on their edutainment video platform later. The biggest project we've ever worked on is well underway. We got the 12 kilo, 200 gazillion pieces Manta already built. We got the mountains shaped up, we got the lake shaped. And just a while back, Lucas and Victor finished off the first part of the mini dioramas on the sides of the mountains. This week, we're gonna do that. This box has a perfect fit in that cutout in the big diorama. And in here, we're gonna tell what happens to the Fire Warriors friends that disappeared or died. We're gonna build a Gene Steeler Colts lab. And they're going to be experimenting on two different Tau Warriors, probably aircast models because it will be super unique to the diorama, of course. We're gonna have them lying on sort of like a operation table and maybe have someone cutting them open. We're maybe gonna have one in sort of like a cryo tube in the back and just gonna decorate it and build up like an entire lab, I guess. And it's gonna be really cool. So I'm gonna bring out all of the stuff that I'm gonna need for this piece, probably tons and tons of plastic card from there we'll just see what happens because i think it's gonna be amazing i'm gonna start with these plastic card tiles they are already pre-cut sort of made like tiles I don't know if you can see them. And they're gonna be the walls and the floors in the lab. So I'm just gonna start by cutting that out and then we'll probably build the miniatures and see how it fits and how big a tables we're gonna need, etc. So let's start with that. So I was working on cutting these and I realized I don't have enough of the tiles. So I do have these like diamond metal grid things. So we're gonna do a metal floor instead. I think that's gonna be just as cool. So I got the base stuff done. I'm gonna build the minis now to see kind of how they're gonna look when they're in sort of the diorama and what I need to add, how much place I have. So, yes. They're actually fitting. This is something that you should do whenever you build a diorama. Just make sure that everything looks good and has a nice composition. And with that, I'm gonna start building the cryotube, I think. What do you wanna do? I wanna paint the uh, chain. Sh chain, chain so good. Yeah. <laughs> So I gotta fix all of the tubes and furniture in the diorama. Uh, at first I thought I would do them from plastic card, but then I came to remember that there's a guy who has a company called M3 Studios who make these like gribbly bits, cubes and stuff for like post-apocalyptic like games and stuff like that. I just went through the library of files I have from that Kickstarter. A lot of them look amazing. So I'm gonna print a bunch of them and then we're just gonna try out and see how they fit, because I think that's gonna be like the, the perfect sweet spot, so. So we got uh, this kind of like a cupboard I'm gonna use in the background of the diorama. We got some uh, of these like pipings and a lot of cool bits. Let's just get started with adding it in and see kind of how much room we have and then we'll, we'll take it from there, I guess. So here in the back, I'm gonna build a cryotube later, but for now I'm using this airbrush flow improver as sort of like a guide, as a replacement proxy. I think it's gonna look really cool. Uh, so I might even use this empty bottle when I'm casting sort of a miniature in it. So we got the Tau Aircast model. It's gonna be lying on this one, uh, but obviously his posing isn't good. 
And I kind of want to try to see if I can heat it up with like hot water and see if I can make him lying down without having to cut him up too much because we're going to cut him anyway. Nice. Feeling kind of happy about this. It's working good. So now it's time to finally bring out this and we're going to see if we can cast something with this one in sort of a tube. We're gonna make some tubing go from his back as well. So that's gonna be a cryo tube. So I'm gonna cut it up, pour resin in here, and. So I painted the, the first uh, air cast towel model, kind of liking where he's going. I'm gonna try to do the, the clear cast now and create his cryo tube. I hope I don't mess up because if I do, I only have one more model and then I have to order another Manta to get more of these and I don't wanna have to do that, so fingers crossed. Okay, so I'm gonna do the rest and pour now. I'm kind of excited and scared about this, as I mentioned earlier. I'm gonna use green ink and make the sort of water it's in green, but Lucas had this great idea. What if I use fluorescent orange and dip like a toothpick, just swirl it around, and we'll have some cool orange fluorescent stuff in there. So I'm gonna try that, but first, I need to mix the stuff up and get started. And I want to suck out all of the air and the gas in the resin, so let's bring out our new vacuum chamber. And with the resin bubble and gas free, it was time to make the pour and finally place the miniature in what's gonna be the cryo tube. And don't forget that orange fluorescent ink that I stirred in, that's gonna look amazing in the end. Time to do some pressure potting. I'm kind of excited about this one because with the pressure pot we can pretty much make all of the bubbles in the resin so tiny so that they're not visible to the human eye. Obviously there's not a lot of bubbles in there but since we put the mini down and stirred around with the ink we got some of it so with this it's gonna be gone. So, we got a new day. Let's see how the resin pour actually did. Oh my god, it's so much better than I had expected. And before we continue with the painting, there's a short message from this week's sponsor, Wondrium. It's an entertaining and educational subscription service where you can find the answer to everything you ever wondered about. They've got carefully curated content, both short and long form, as well as documentaries, and are often more academically comprehensive and curated and are presented by experts. I, for example, have this idea that I want to get better at drawing. And there's a class called See Better, Draw Better by Katri Ewing. And already in the first chapter, she teaches about how to look at things and how to analyze stuff to get better at drawing. And that is something that you don't only can implement on your drawings, but actually when you paint miniatures as well. And in January, there's a new course about Norse mythology coming and I'm actually really excited about watching that because I'm kind of a history nerd. And there is literally anything from history, science, cooking, art that you can find on Wondrium. In a nutshell, if you like learning stuff and have a curious mind, they've got something for you. And right now they're offering my viewers a free trial. You can check out the platform by going to wondrium.com slash squidmar or just following the link down in the video description. Now let's go on with the painting. Okay, so I want to build sort of the mechanical parts on top of the cryo tube now. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do, but I have a big bits box, so I'm gonna bring that out, see if we have some fun gribbly bits that we can use. Otherwise, we'll use plastic art to build it. And 
And the whole crytube ended up being built with just a bunch of random items we had in the studio. Anything from old 3D printed bits to old Warhammer bits. I used plastic card to make rivets. I used some leftover tile bits from the plastic card to create the top and bottom parts of the tube. And the awesome part is when we start painting it, it's gonna all come together. So I'm kind of done with this now, so I'm gonna start painting it. You can see how nicely I've done it. <laughs> kind of covered it up so I don't mess anything up with the painting. But I think it's gonna look quite cool when we have paint on there. I'm gonna try to use a sponge and try to look like metal without spending too much time. Okay, I painted this whole thing in like five minutes with just sponges and I just focused everything in like this angle because that's where the light is gonna come from when we hit it. So I'm just gonna remove the tape and then I'm gonna highlight it. I think it's gonna look quite amazing. So let's see how it goes when we remove the tape. Ooh wee, it actually worked. I'm so happy with this. And now I'm just gonna add a bunch of these green gooey part leaking out from the cryo tube and it's gonna make it look so amazing! I'm so happy so far! Honestly, I think this is probably the coolest thing I've ever done. I just love like the green goo coming down. It like really feels like a cryo tube, so I'm really happy about that. But I had this cool idea. A lead would make it even better! Because lights and stuff. So I'm gonna go ask Victor if he wants to do it. Victor, you wanna drill a hole and install some LEDs? Yes. So Lucas, you ready to do some painting? Yeah, yeah. always. So we got everything built, we got the tube kind of done, uh, now we have to paint the environment and the figures. So I'm gonna put Lucas and do like half of them, and I'm gonna do the other half. I'm gonna need all of these, please. Sorry, sorry, hope you're okay. I just finished making the table where the towel is laying and being operated on and it's looking way too clean so I'm just gonna add some blood for the blood god everywhere make it a lot gorier and perfect. Okay, so here's a little secret trick. So I painted all the vials and like glass jars and stuff on this one. But to really make it look like glass, I'm gonna use some of this. Tamiya X22 Clear. This is like a glossy varnish. It's alcohol or solvent based, so it has a little bit of a different sheen to it than like normal acrylic mediums. So I'm gonna add a coat of that to all of my vials and everything, and they're just gonna really look like glass. So let's do that. Oh, 
Lucas just nailed these ones. Seriously, what a killer. So we're almost done. We got this one left to do. We got some of these like buckets and stuff. And yeah, and we're almost done. Okay, friends, it's almost done. I'm really excited. It's kind of the big paint job for me on this diorama and I've put a lot of time into it. It's taking me way more than I thought it would do. So almost done and then we're just gonna put everything together. How many hours have we spent now on all the painting? It's gonna be like 40 maybe? Yeah, I think so. So we got a bunch of furniture left to do. Luke is gonna speed round a bunch of those and paint the little creature in the back. Then we're gonna start washing the walls and making them dirty and everything. I think it's gonna be super fun. So let's do a speed round. Looking really good. So, some bad news today. Uh, Lucas called in sick, he's got a fever, and it's the last day before Christmas, which means that I do not have a lot of time to finish this whole thing. And obviously Victor has to finish the edit. I mean, it's almost done. We have to finish the walls, because they look super clean. We're gonna have to muddy them down. Do like a lot of special effects. I had planned on making some lamps and lights to hang from the ceiling, but we're gonna have to do that some other time before we finish like the entire project. So I'm just gonna jump on trying to finish the walls, painting them. Uh, hopefully I have enough time to add some like more gooey blood stuff. If not, I'll show you whatever I'll manage to finish today. Yeah, no time to waste. Let's just start painting the walls and we'll see how much I manage to finish. So as you can see, we started adding rocks to kind of make it feel like it's really part of like this uh, underground cave tunnel system. Unfortunately, because Lucas is sick today, as I mentioned, I'm not gonna have time to add all of the ones we had planned. So that's another one of these things that we're gonna have to add later in the diorama. So my dudes, I'm actually really happy about how much I managed to do. I think it looks really good. We're still gonna have to do even more on it, uh, but I'm gonna do a grand reveal today, show how much we finished this week, and then sometime during this whole project, we'll, we'll show you more of that. And if you wanna see us finish this entire thing, don't forget to subscribe because you don't want to miss it. Like the whole project is gonna be so awesome. First, thanks to my patrons again. You guys are awesome. Special thanks to the top patrons. This year would not be possible without you guys. So I'm super, super humble and thankful for all the support you guys give. Now, let's do a grand reveal. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. Thanks again, Wondrium, for sponsoring this video. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.